This is the second section in the complex, complex numbers chapter core year two. And uh, in the last section, we saw how we could write a complex number in exponential form. Now you'll see some of the advantages of writing a complex number in exponential form. It makes it really easy to multiply and divide numbers in uh, exponential form. So uh, when complex numbers are in exponential form, If we want to multiply them, we just multiply the modulus uh, and we add the arguments. And if we want to divide in exponential form, again, very easily, we divide the modulus and we subtract the arguments that's so very easy very straightforward to do okay right let's have a look at this so in part a uh, we want to do that multiplication so we're going to multiply the r's together to get the new uh, modulus and then we're just going to add the arguments together. So one argument is pi over six. The other one is pi over three. Now uh, that's like one six plus two six, which is three six. And that just simplifies to pi over two. Um, so um, in exponential form, we have two root three e. Um, pi over 2. We want to convert it to x plus i, y, so I would suggest we write it in cos sine form. So cos pi over 2 um, plus i sine pi over 2. Now you may recognize that actually this is because of the argument of pi over 2. This is on an argon diagram, this would just be pointing straight up. So we should just get um, 2 root 3i as the answer. Um, so, you know, we don't really need to work it out. Think about what this looks like. It's basically pointing straight up on the um, imaginary axis going up to 2 root 3. You can do it on your calculator and, and multiply these out, but you know, we should know and we should recognize things like this. It is just going to be 2 root 3 i. Yeah, saves you a bit of time. And in the exam, if you start messing around on the calculator and make a mistake, when you know you can spot, you can think about that, what that looks like. So, you know, when you're um, converting these complex numbers, try and remember like some of these arguments here and that will maybe give you a clue to you know what the answer should be without actually having to physically work out on the calculator okay part b um what have we got we've got uh, a complex number here and uh, said is this here, 2 plus 2i. We're told that the real part of the product of two numbers is that. And we're told, we're given the modulus, um, or the moduli of them is that I uh, use geometric reasoning to find two possible uh, values for y, given your answers in exponential form. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to draw the z on an argon diagram. So it's two across, two up. So our complex number is there. Now we're given some information about where the product of the two um, of Z and W end up. And it basically says that the imaginary part, I'll write this down, 
So the imaginary part of z times w is zero. When these two uh, complex numbers get multiplied together, there is no real part, or there's no imaginary part to the answer. So what does that mean? That means that zw, z times w is either here or here. This has no, this satisfies this piece of information that um, the imaginary part is zero. So that's where the product ends up. Now let's think about the argument of z. So going back to this, so I'm going to work out the argument of z. Now I can work that out. Lots of arrows here. So, so argument of z is going to be the tan inverse or arc tan, if you like, of 2 over 2. Isosceles triangle, that basically means that's 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. Right, I know that when z and w got multiplied together, I added the arguments. So I start with an argument of pi over 4. I add some sort of argument to it. So this is the argument of z. This is the argument of w. And where did I end it? end up I ended up either with an argument of zero here or I ended up with an argument of pi so what does the argument of W need to be for that to happen well it if I end up at um zero that means that the argument of w is negative pi over four because if you add those together you get zero and if i ended up at pi the argument of w is three pi over four so i now have two values for the argument of w now let's see if I can work out the modulus of W. Now there's some other information. It says that when these two things get multiplied together, Z and W, you end up with three times the modulus of Z. Now the only way that can happen is if the modulus of W is three. Yeah, because you multiply the modulus together and Z gets times by three to give you what they both are. So that means that the modulus of W is three. So we've got all the information we, we need. We've got the modulus of W and two possible arguments. So now we're ready to write our answer down and they want the answer in exponential form. So three E negative I pi over four or its other possible value is three e pi i pi over 4 and that's it this one here um, we've got a division now we can uh, change these we've got a couple of ways of doing it we could change these to exponential form these things to exponential form first then do the working or I could do the working because I know how to divide by just dividing those, subtracting the moduli, and then convert. Now, it doesn't really make much difference um, either way. Um, I will probably just uh, leave it as it is in that form. Divide the R's. And then, so my new value of R is going to be that. And the uh, argument will be this pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 6. So the 2 over root 2, I think we can 
rationalize the denominator and that just gives us root 2 and if I do pi over 12 and I take away uh, 5 pi over 6 I end up with uh, negative 3 pi over 4 Okay, always check to see if these things are in the range or not, uh, whether you need to add or subtract 2 pi. And that's it now, we can write the answer. So it's going to be root 2 e negative i to the 3 pi over 4. Okay, you should now be able to do exercise 1b on pages 7 to 8 of the uh, textbook.